Good morning everybody, good day. Whenever you're watching this, Gerdy Verboert here, their greatly guiding coach. And today is day three of um, the series about how to hike the mountains safely, solo or for the first time or any time for that matter. Uh, you know, these tips are just, it's not just for the beginner or the first time solo hiker, it, it, they are really for everybody who wants to go out into the mountains or in any kind of nature. So day three, tip three of, um, yeah, I was just looking where my dog was looking. So day three of those tips for hiking safely. And that is learn to read a map, learn how to use a map. Yesterday in tip number two, what is it? I talked about, um, the importance of researching your trail and using a map, one of my, uh, my absolute favorite um, tool to research a trail. But uh, a map is of no use when you don't know how to use it. So, find yourself, once you've chosen a trail, find yourself a map that um, will tell you exactly what that trail looks like. And um, like I said yesterday, a map um, with a scale of um, at least or at most a scale of 150 one uh, to 50,000 one centimeter is 500 meters in reality you can go smaller I always forget if the number goes down is that a smaller or a bigger scale in any case you can go for one of uh, to 30,000 or one to 25 but like I said yesterday, I like 1 to 50,000. It gives me more than enough detail. Uh, while also, hang on, I have to rescue my dog here. He is, come on, there you go. Tangled himself on the line. So, um, where was I? Uh, oh yeah, it, 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 1 to 50,000 has enough detail uh, for me to figure out what this trail is going to bring me and how I'm going to hike it. So, get yourself a map. I'm assuming you have one now. Maybe you even chose your trail from that particular map. And uh, when you open it, you'll see in one of the corners of the map that there is an index. And this index explains to you what all the symbols on the map mean. It will also tell you when the map was printed and if the map was printed in 1965, you know, put it in a nice frame, put it up on the wall, it is of no use to you anymore. It's way too old. Uh, if the, print, the map was printed in 2016 or 2015, it's probably fine because maps don't get updated every year. There's more, you know, a three-year-old map is perfectly fine. Also make sure it's not one of those uh, tourist maps that you can get at the uh, tourist agency, um, a tourist information center, I mean, because uh, you know, maps with nice pictures on it and everything like that usually don't uh, serve very well as a, uh, as a proper hiking map. So you've got a proper hiking map and now you've got all these symbols on it and what do they mean? So I'll slip some photographs, some detailed photographs of hiking maps of the symbols that I'm going to very briefly explain here in this video so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but here we go. So you will notice there are green uh, areas on the map and white areas on the map as uh, cities and villages and stuff like that. Green is easily, green is uh, usually forest, so you know you'll be hiking among trees. White is where you leave the forest, and I'm talking about mountain hiking maps here, so um, so that's just to be clear. So where you leave the forest, it's oftentimes over the um, the tree line when you get to the white areas. Then there's blue water. Um, there are blue lines on them, brooks, rivers, then there are very thin, usually brown 
or brownish lines on them and they denote the altitude. When they're far apart, it's relatively flat or it is flat. If there's no brown lines on there, it might be as flat as a pancake. Then um, when they're close together, it is really, really steep. And then sometimes you have a lot of uh, black dots very close together and they are, uh, they denote steep cliffs like the ones you can see, oh hang on, like the ones you can see behind me. Those are really steep cliffs, not hikeable and um, it's just, uh, they will be, you can uh, find them on the map as well, assuming that oops that that kind of that you're you'll be hiking in that kind of countryside um, then there's probably uh, even outside the city or outside villages there's little black squares on the map that usually denotes a building a building may sound a little bit big for whatever it is that is denoted on the map but it is some kind of construction um, maybe a small hut or a cabin stable you know that kind of thing uh, what else hiking trails are often clearly marked on the hiking maps in Austria there are um, red lines or red dotted lines and the red line those mean different things as well but they are trails marked trails usually that can be hiked or climbed or that kind of thing so those are the most important um, symbols on a map. Now what I look for on a map, mostly because I hike, um, I like to hike up in the mountains, is that I always look, when I found my trail on the map, I look at how close the lines are that denote the altitude. The closer together, the more I will have to ascend or descend. And um, the more steep that ascent or descent is. And that will help me, uh, tell me how, how hard I will have to work to hike this trail. Um, now I know there are lots of apps these days, map apps, and of course there's GPS's too, that will tell you exactly where you are when you are somewhere in the mountains. Because it's no good uh, just to know how the map works when you're sitting at your desk or at the table. You have to know how to use it when you're in the countryside as well. And map apps are really useful and really handy uh, when you've got those with you or a GPS. <coughs> when you've got that with you when you're in the mountains. They have one drawback though. They run on batteries and batteries can run out. And um, I don't know what your experience is, but batteries always run out at a time that you really need the app to work. And the nice thing about a map is it never runs out of a battery. So I don't, if, I was going to say I don't care, which is not true. I care. But um, when you go hiking, especially when you go into the mountains, where you may not always have reception and that kind of thing, um, bring a paper map. Know how to use a paper map because you might end up in a situation where your app doesn't work, you still have to call somebody for help and you have to be able to tell that person um, or that service where you are and it's really useful when you know how to pinpoint your position on the map. So if you want more information Maybe I'll do a video on how to read a, a proper video on how to read the map and how to use it sometime. But uh, go Google it. I'm sure there's lots of videos that explain to you exactly how to use a map. And uh, I'm sure there's lots of videos that explain to you exactly how to use apps and GPSs and that kind of thing. Um, but be sure to learn how to use it. All right. So that was tip three of my series on how to hike safely. As always, go there greatly. Bye bye.